get this. Beijing. Clear Saturday morning, and a very special race is about to begin. 13 miles or 21 kilometers of asphalt awaits not only human athletes, but robots as well. That's right, folks. Who'd have thunk it? On April 19th, Chinese robots came out of their labs to test their strength and reliability for the world's first ever humanoid half marathon. This is more exciting than Ford versus Ferrari. 20 teams, their coaches, spare batteries, and a roaring crowd going wild. It was a real clash of iron titans. Who could handle sharp turns and potholes? What machine overheated? Did everybody get past the 250,000 movement cycles on the track? And finally, was there actually a winner? This and more in today's episode. Let's get it. Welcome to E-Town District in Beijing, the center of China's high tech. The runners of this historic half marathon started out from South Square in Nanhaiji Park and finished in the Xingxuan National Industrial Park of Innovation. For safety, the track was divided into two, one for humans and one for robots. No one, of course, thought that robots would be able to outrun humans just yet. The organizers actually admitted that initially they did not even expect any robot to reach the finish line at all. The goal was to find out the limit of the robot's strength, hence the three and a half hours to complete the course with all the falling, getting up and constantly replacing batteries. At the same time, the robots could run on their own or under constant supervision by an operator. The only selection criteria was humanoid form, two arms and two legs no wheels. One team, however, tried to sneak a propeller onto their android, but were quickly and shamefully dismissed from the event. So who won? Well, we'll tell you in a bit. But first, let's find out how PRC got to and is currently on its way to becoming a leader in humanoid machines. China is big deal in the world of robots. That's according to authorities of the country. Is it true or is it not? It's no secret that many Western experts look with irony at its often unattractive creations. However, Beijing now accounts for two-thirds of all patents in robotics. The country is the leader in the use of industrial robots and now plans to take the lead in humanoid technology. At CES Consumer Electronics Show of 2025, of the 14 humanoids on stage with Jensen Huan, four were from China. In Morgan Stanley's Humanoid 100 list, over half of the companies involved are Chinese. What's more, 61% of all new humanoids from 2022 up to now have been created in the sacred earth and divine land. You can find robots literally everywhere in the country, in hotels, restaurants, on the Great Wall, and even on TV. Robots put on large-scale shows every holiday, and the locals, well, they love it. Imperfections or failures of robots are perceived here as a natural stage of development. As Confucius once eloquently put it, our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. This is probably because of history, since humanoid robots did not get off to a rosy start in China. The first humanoid robot, Xiang Jingzhe, built in Y2K, not only caused ridicule all over the world, but even became a separate meme in Japan, where it was of course compared to Asimo. Yes, the android from Honda was introduced in the year 2000, as well as for many years embodied the dream of perfect robots from science fiction. Still, Zhang Jingzhe from the National University of Defense Technology walked and recognized simple commands. Its task was to overcome the dynamic walking and balancing problems that come with other androids. Now, the next famous robot from China was the Jia Jia Gynoid, introduced in 2013 and updated three years later. Jia Jia was immediately nicknamed Robot Goddess for her appearance. Developed by the University of Science and Technology of China, the robot was able to recognize speech and even hold simple dialogues. However, the real breakthrough was Walker, the robot from UB Tech, introduced in 2018. This was the real answer to Asimo. 
The robot was positioned as a universal home assistant. It was able not just to move and communicate, but also open doors, bring stuff, draw, recognize the owners, and perform a number of commands. Obviously, the list of capabilities was limited to the ones that were pre-programmed. Since the AI needed for robots to understand the world around them and comprehend any inquiry did not and still does not exist. You gotta remember, this was like a decade ago. Even CyberOne from Xiaomi, introduced in 2023 and positioned as a Tesla bot challenger, caused more ridicule than admiration. But in 2024, one by one, Unitree starts rattling off humanoids like it ain't a biggie. And that's when the number of androids in China begins to snowball. It seems there's a new human-looking robot being released almost every week. No wonder they decided to do a half marathon. We'll go you one further. This is just the first discipline robots are competing in. Very soon, we're gonna see live broadcasts of real fights between robots. Kinda like UFC, but with G1. Unitree's Iron Fist King is supposed to air in under a month from now. And as always, we got our eyes on the prize. So click that bell to get all the robot updates. Now at this rate, China will soon become the first country with robot Olympics. But back to the marathon. Among the participants of the race, there were robots of various sizes, from 2'9 or 85 centimeters to 5'11 or 180 centimeters. The smallest participant was Little Giant, designed by students and teachers of the Beijing University of Science and Technology, the tiny robot was even given a special training suit. Other robots also dressed up as best they could. Some were almost entirely hidden under tracksuits and windbreakers. Other robots tried to brighten up their lives with sneakers. Some ran in boxing gloves, which wasn't exactly clear as to why, and one robot wore a red armband that read, Doomed to Win. Ironically, it didn't. The only robot gynoid Juan Juan attracted a lot of attention at the marathon. Unfortunately, the attractive appearance and artistic design of the body did not help the robot to advance far from the starting line. So who got to the end? And here he is, hero of the day. Tiangong Ultra is a 5'11 or 180 centimeter tall, 120 pounds or 55 kilo robot that completed the entire track in 2 hours, 40 minutes and 42 seconds and became the first ever winner of a humanoid half marathon. The robot created by Beijing X Humanoid Center and UB Tech Robotics was one of the six androids that actually made it to the finish line. The others? Well, let's just say their stamina was a bit lacking. They should probably call David Goggins. Now, the route turned out to be a real challenge. Speed bumps, turns, potholes, but Tiangong persevered. During the race, it replaced its batteries only three times, which is an excellent result for such an energy-consuming task. The robot had to keep its balance, cope with overheating, and keep in touch with the operator. Interestingly, Right before the marathon, engineers managed to double the robot's speed from 3.5 miles or 6 kilometers to 7.5 miles or 12 kilometers an hour, in part thanks to its long legs and a running algorithm that mimics humans. The average speed of the robot over the entire distance of the course came out to be 6 miles or 10 kilometers per hour. Now, the robot was not the only participant from X Humanoid, but the others didn't clock in any achievements. Incidentally, last month, Research Center launched Hui Si Kai Wu, a general-purpose embodied AI platform. Chinese engineers want the system to be an equivalent to Android, but only for humanoid robots. Hui Si Kai Wu can control different types of robots, helping them with tasks ranging from industrial sorting to assembling building blocks, for example. And in second place came the No Edix N2, which stands at 311 or 120 centimeters tall and weighs 66 pounds or 30 kilos. It previously became famous for its ability to perform continuous backflips. The robot, which can reach speeds of up to 7 miles or 11.5 kilometers per hour, is equipped with an NVIDIA Jetson computer and a body with 18 degrees of freedom. The company is serious about bringing it to market soon at a price of $5,500. That's not a lot for a humanoid robot, so we expect the Baby N2 to attract a lot of interest from governmental agencies and research centers. 
especially since despite the robot's height, developers tried very hard to put in maximum flexibility and coordination that would be similar to the natural gait of a human. The robot is able to independently switch to different modes depending on the terrain and dynamically adjust its center of gravity. And the third place finisher was the Droid Up X02. Developed by Joidi for research and education, the robot is unique because it has a very unusual feature. According to the engineers, they've developed the world's only bionic tendon actuator. Although, we're still not 100% sure since we couldn't verify it yet, but if indeed true, it would allow the robot to withstand three to four times its body weight. At the same time, the 5'3 or 160 centimeter tall robot is very light, only 62 pounds or 28 kilos. And its battery life is claimed to last six hours. Now, why the robot had boxing gloves, we still don't know. Oh, and look, the medals awarded to the winners of the half marathon were shaped as a robot. Now, who else participated? Quavo from Liju Robotics, which we don't see often, but visitors to the Zhang Guangkun Innovation Center in Beijing see every day. These are the facts. The 5'7 or 170 centimeter tall robot easily performs administrative tasks, answers visitors' questions, and helps guests navigate the entire area of the facility. Liju Robotics says that this is not the robot's only job. It's also used in universities, exhibitions, and car factories, but it is yet to be specified as to which ones. And Booster Robotics also competed for a medal. Although unsuccessful, the robot is, in a sense, an elite athlete. In 2024, it became a two-time world champion at the IEEE Roz Humanoids Conference. There, Booster T1 took gold in walking and overcoming obstacles with doors, beating the competition by a margin. On top of speed, the robot showed precision and stability. It gets up on its own after falls, knows how to kick a ball, and sorts waste. Technically, it had every chance to win this one, but better luck next time. Another humanoid was the Mini High. This humanoid machine with 23 degrees of freedom is only 29 or 85 centimeters tall and weighs 22 pounds or 10 kilos, including the battery. The little guy tried its best, but didn't cross the finish line either. Oddly enough, the great Unitree did not directly participate in the marathon, although its G1 robots were presented on behalf of other teams. The robot has long been available for purchase, so it's no surprise that scores of developers decided to try out their running algorithms on it. It's strange that the robot didn't win, because its technical specs are quite striking, and we've seen it more than once on rough terrain. But robot sports apparently come with a twist, just like people sports. The half marathon has become more than just a show. It's now a window into the future. Chinese humanoids not only run, they ride bicycles, dance, and do kung fu. That's what long-term planning gets you, folks. As of 2023, humanoid robotics is officially China's strategic priority. Mass production, supply chains, and ambitious startups like X-Humanoid and Unitary Robotics are all working towards a unified goal, bringing humanoids out of the labs and into the factory floors, or hospitals, or homes. China will produce more than 10,000 humanoids as early as this year already, and the country's market is estimated to amount to $2.5 billion. Now, which humanoid did you guys like most, and who do you think will win next time? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. In the meantime, subscribe to the channel, like our videos, and check out our social media for more from the world of high tech.